Good evening. The Supreme Court has delivered a split verdict in the hijab matter, while one judge, Justice Gupta, has upheld the order by saying that wearing hijab is not an essential religious practice, essentially concurring with the Karnataka High Court judgment. The other judge, with a deferring judgment, Justice Dhulia, has said that this case was never about essential religious practice, it was simply a case of freedom of choice. He's also linked it to girls being denied an education, which also, by the way, is a fundamental right, because they will not be let out of their homes by parents if they do not wear a hijab. But at a time when Iranian women are protesting in mass numbers, they are cutting their hair at the death of Masha Amini. How can any right-thinking liberal, how can any feminist women be seen as backing what world over is seen, one, as a patriarchal construct, and be more importantly as a regressive construct and ultimately will this issue only be settled by a constitutional bench of the supreme court of india there is no end to the hangama over hijab seven months after the karnataka high court upheld a government order banning hijab in educational institutes Petitions challenging the hijab ban led to a split verdict in the Supreme Court. While one judge, Justice Hemant Gupta, dismissed the petitions, the other judge, Justice Sudhanshu Dhulia, was of a differing opinion. He said asking girls to take off their hijab is an attack on their privacy and dignity. He said that under the Indian constitutional scheme, wearing a hijab should be simply a matter of choice. It may or may not be a matter of essential religious practice, but it is still a matter of conscience, belief and expression. He said the government order and restrictions on hijab goes against value of fraternity and human dignity. The case has also to be seen in the perspective of the challenges already faced by a girl child in reaching her school. And are we making the life of a girl child any better by denying her education merely because she wears a hijab? प्राइम मिनिस्टर से सबसे पहले मैं ये अपील करना चाहूँगी कि वो हमारे एजुकेशन को हम पे छोड़ दें और हमारे हिजाब को उसमें कोई कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ना बने हमारा हिजाब क्योंकि देखिए हिजाब हमारा राइट है और हमें इसको फॉलो करना है द मैटर विल नाउ बी प्लेस बिफोर द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया हु विल कॉन्स्टिट्यूट अ लार्जर बेंच टू हियर द केस ऑफ फ्रेश टिल देन द हिजाब बैंड रिमेन्स इन प्लेस आई एक्सपेक्ट द जजमेंट definitely it will be in favor of karnataka's rules and act the whatever the rules and regulations which has been followed now will be valid till the judgment of the higher bench come but many in the opposition are hoping for a more favorable order from a larger bench jo high court ka judgment tha meri rai mein it was bad in law bad in terms of its contents or it had misused quranic commentaries and translation This has serious ramifications; should not have been allowed. But at a time when women worldwide are demanding not to wear the hijab, can individual choice override institutional autonomy? Let me now bring in our guest, Amitabh Sinha, as a senior advocate in the Supreme Court. Amina Begum Ansari, political analyst; Firoz Ahmed Bakht, former chancellor of the Maulana Azad National Urdu University. Azgar Khan senior advocate and will also be joined by Sara Shah Haleem uh, author and activist Amina Begum let me start with you first uh, the contention of the muslim side the girls who uh, went to court in challenge against this order by the Karnataka state government uh, was that wearing hijab is an essential religious practice the Karnataka high court uh, did not buy that argument it struck down that argument in the supreme court the argument that was made forth and that's what justice dhulia has also upheld uh, is that this was never about erp this was always about being uh, uh wearing hijab being a freedom of choice now the point is a the goal posts are being shifted because clearly uh wearing hijab is not an essential religious practice because if it were then every muslim woman would have to wear a hijab including people like yourself and that's not the case millions of muslim women across the world do not wear a hijab therefore it's not essential or mandatory but this shifting of the goal post from erp argument in the high court to now just simply freedom of choice argument in the supreme court that is problematic 
Yeah, exactly. I have been uh, um, I have been saying this thing. Uh, I have been giving this argument for very long that this is not the part of the Islam. This is a cultural dress code, which also comes from the Saudi Arabia culture, not even from the Indian culture. So um, uh, nobody can actually prove that it is an essential part of Islam. There is a five pillars of Islam, and that is that are essential. Even that. Uh, five pillars are not mandatory. There come so many circumstances where one cannot uh, not can perform those uh, rituals. So uh, making this uh, entire things uh, turning into uh, an attack of Muslim identity is the main uh, I I think is the main agenda here. So that's why the we are sh uh, seeing this goalpost entire goal post thinking this is about the freedom of choice but how it can be uh, a choice when this is a patriarchal construct when a society expect you to okay. behave in a certain way all right let it me ask Ayra Shah choice. Halim uh, you know the ERP argument got uh, uh, completely blown out in the Karnataka High Court therefore the argument changed the goal post changed in the Supreme Court but Saira Shah Halim I am very curious to know what the dis deferring judge today Mr. Dulia Justice Dulia said and he quoted the Bijoy Emanuel uh, judgment from 1986 by the Kerala High Court. Uh, and it's fascinating to me that you have a judgment of a high court in this country which says it's okay for people not to sing the uh, national anthem under uh, religious freedom, uh, freedom of religious practice. I mean, why should any religion bar anyone from singing the national anthem? And that's kosher in this country. See, definitely national anthem has to be mandatory. You know, there is no debate on that. Be it schools, institutions, everywhere, because the national anthem is a pride. So, uh, uh, what, what was the other question? One second. Once no, again, so I'm, I'm saying that can't be the basis of uh, the deferring judge today saying that uh, if two students who were apparently Jehovah's Witnesses were not allowed, uh, were allowed not to sing the national anthem, then the same should apply to people, uh, uh, girl students wearing the hijab. I feel one thing is there that here you must have seen the ratio of the dropouts, you know, in these varsities, it has been immense. Now here we cannot, you know, where these girls come from really orthodox conservative Muslim families, here we cannot put another hurdle on them, impose another hurdle uh, on them. So the parents find a reason not to send them to school. It is really tragic. Here we should encourage the child to go to school in hijab or without the hijab. Now what happens is the children, I'm telling you, the orthodox parents, because I know what the mindset is in conservative Muslim families. The mindset is the girl is going out in the big bad world. And if she is wearing the hijab, she's somehow protected rather she is kind of no but, um, but Saira that argument you know, if I may uh, uh, that argument does yeah. not hold because uh, that's uh, by that logic you can also justify triple talaq right no, it's a regressive practice holds. it no, is a regressive no, no, no. practice I mean so that, uh, that, uh, that, the justification that, that, justification that, of something that is one second okay, can, so I, can I finish give yeah. me 10 seconds justification of something that is bad in law by saying oh that's how the conservative practice is because a greater evil will happen if you don't allow this to that happen, is. then I mean that, that's not that 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 doesn't make a legal argument. Okay, okay, and Saka, what is, what is better? Okay, Saira, can, Saira, can Saira, Saira, yeah. So and that's what that's Saira, a bit Amina, please, please yield. Saira, so, I have asked the question to Saira. Let her answer. Yeah. Let me speak, please. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So please. what what is evolution? Going to school or stopping the girls from school, saying that uh, hijab, uh, what do you call, uh, is no longer uh, you know what do you call it? Hijab is not compulsory or rather you will be asked to disrobe yourself outside the varsity so you will not go to school so what is better having uh, uneducated girls or having educated girls what is better i'll tell so you what I i'll tell you what is evolution let the child, no, no, let since you asked the question let the child wear the hijab and get an education no, no, i i agree or, on principle know, that no one has the right to deny anybody an education for whatever reason a right to education is as much a fundamental right no no but but saira 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 since you asked, since you asked, and I'll bring in the other guests also, since you asked me what is evolution, f to, to my mind, what is evolution is what is happening in Iran right now. Okay, okay, Tens just of one, millions okay, of just women just coming out Zaga, and guessing. rejecting the hijab, cutting their hair okay. because Masha Amani yeah. Amini was, uh, was, was killed because of the You're modern police. That is evolution. What is happening no, in Iran right now is evolution. That's my view. You can defer with it. 
Britain. So are they going to use the Iran analogy with India because it's it's a different country, right? It's a, of it's course a different it is. geopolitics of, altogether. Of course so it is. Here, okay, if you're talking about reforms, any religion it takes time. Let me even reform Hinduism for a very long time. And here I'm talking about the dark era before the social reformers actually worked they went through yes. and then started going to school and the whole dowry system was uh, was uh, done away with and all other regressive practice so yes. it takes a huge amount of time and effort to bring in reforms and here we cannot expect miracles in a day if we want if we want to do away with regressive practices let's start with all religions right why single out one religion there's Ma other system even in hinduism let are, me tell you you are you there are validating <laughs> your own argument that uh, like no. in hinduism there was the regressive practice of sati the practice of dowry today you have a law no, in this so country it is illegal to give dowry or to take dowry there's a law it is but illegal it, yeah. but, but it's Let, still, still prevalent, right? That no, no. is still prevalent. That, that does not, man, that does not make the, it. No, no. Ma'am, 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 ma'am. Let's be very, let's be very, very clear. I, I, I want to get the others also, please, with your permission. Let me get Feroz Ahmed Bak. One, one part of the argument is there is the law of the land. In the case of dowry, the law of the land is very, very clear. Giving so dowry, taking dowry is illegal. So period. Sorry. That is the job of the law. Is, is the job of the law is to act as a deterrent. The law does not mean hundred percent guarantee against social or cultural practices, even if they are regressive. But but but, Firoz Ahmed Buck, ma'am, ma'am, please. I've I've spent a lot of time with you. Let me get the others also, please. Firoz Ahmed Buck, the point is, and I keep going back to this. No feminist can say that wearing a hijab, even if you are bringing forth the freedom of choice argument. That wearing a hijab is a progressive practice. It is not. It is a regressive practice. It is a patriarchal practice, and it is an anti-feminist practice. I am very, very clear about it. Firoz Ahmed Bak. All right, uh, Zaka Sahab. Ha, uh, Zaka Sahab. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Now, uh, you know, usually your debates are very calm, cool and composed like you are. But today I can see some heckling and some kind of disorder. Anyway, I hope that I will not be heckled in. I will not be dis disturbed in between. Now, let me tell you one thing. There are some people who are trying to misguide and mislead these girls. They are radicalizing the entire situation. I do not know what for. What is the reason? Politics, it is something else. Whatever it is, you are right, Zaka, when you have said that, you know, uh, if these girls are not uh, not, not uh, leaving their hijab in the classroom, this is very much regressive. It is not progressive. And it, uh, let me remove one big misconception. That is, they are saying hijab is banned in India. It is not banned in India. I was in uh, UAE recently. There, you know, many people ask me what is happening against Muslims. I said nothing. Everything is at peace. Everything is wonderful. Muslims are having a good time in India. And, you know, these people are saying it is banned. It is not banned. Only according to the system of the dress code of the school, it is not allowed in the classroom. These girls can enter the school campus. They can wear it in, uh, in, uh, on the grounds. They can wear it in the canteen, anywhere else in the library. But in the classroom, there might be some reason that the school uh, authorities have uh, de denied uh, the permission to uh, the hijab. Now, 10 months these girls are out of their classroom, Zaka. If a child does not attend the class even for one or two days, see the kind of loss these uh, girls yeah. are having. We had Fatima Begum, who was the first Muslim judge. In fact, she used to wear burqa and hijab everywhere. But when she used to sit on the seat of judgment in the court of law, yeah. then she was told there's a dress code. She followed that dress code. And out of that, and, and we, 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 just a minute, just five more seconds, Zaka, please. Yeah. Five more seconds. And you see Tajambal Hussain. She's a Kashmiri girl. And she is today the kickboxing gold medalist from India. We are proud of her. We have so many people like her. We have Sania Mirza, right? There are women, uh, you know, who, 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 go, who get good education. And these people who are not allowing these girls to go to the, uh, to, to the classroom, they are saying no hijab, no kitab. They are actually making their future bleed. Okay. These girls Asghar, will be tomorrow's, Khan, tomorrow's judges. You know, uh, these will be tomorrow's... I, I, uh, uh, tomorrow, no, Saira may have a limited doctors. point that uh, no, no one should be denied education. The right to education mm -hmm. is, a, is a fundamental right. No, no one who's coming in the way of, of, uh, of a girl child and her education, that, that should be criminal. 
Now the point is Asghar no, Khan. She is right oh, no, no, she I is am right asking Asghar Khan, sir. Thank you, hmm. uh, Asghar Khan, sir. The point is who fine, is coming fine, okay. in the way? Who is coming in hmm. the way? The parents of these children are coming in the way, saying that if they are not allowed to wear hijab in the classroom, then we will we will not send them. You can't you can't fault the state for that. The state has issued an order. Yes, you are well within your legal right to challenge that order. But to say that the state is denying them an education, that is again disingenuous. There may be there may be many many millions of A Muslim of families. No, no, there the may be many many millions of Muslim families. Asghar Khan sir, Saab, whose parents uh, allow their children sir. to go to school, Muslim girls, without wearing the hijab. They are not denying the right to education. I, I, I would I would like to start from here. That uh, the slogan raised by the government. लड़की बचाओ लड़की पढ़ाओ आई एम इन फेवर ऑफ दैट स्लोगन एंड मोर ओवर मीन वाइल सम डिस्कशन वॉज रेस फॉर दरान पाकिस्तान अफगानिस्तान दीज आर नॉट अवर कंट्री अवर कंट्री इज इन इंडिया आई लव माई इंडिया एंड वी आर दिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया एज वेल एज दूर क्वेश्चन आई थिंक वट इट मेक डिफरेंस इफ ए गर्ल इज wearing hijab in christian she is wearing a scarf in sikh uh, brothers they are carrying turban on their head it makes no different and if you uh, go through the study then the hijab girls are topper in the class and in the school also they are on such services they are um, uh, flying the uh, even aeroplanes my submission is that this is a paper political issue it was raised by the, the state first thereafter they reached oh, to the court firoz sir firoz sir please mat bolna thank you and firoz sir please mat bolna to supreme court thereafter to supreme court is a paper political issue and the asghar khan uh, sir was better look, than me we all know the politics the, i don't want to get no 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 i don't want to get into the politics asghar yes, khan yes, sir argue on nene, law you, argue you on merit nahi nahi nah, nah, law ke bare mein bataiye nahi nahi main aapse puch raha hu nahi nahi main aapse puch raha hu ek choti si sawal asghar khan sir you said yes women are flying uh, aircraft these days right tomorrow if there is a uh, a fighter pilot of the indian army or the indian air force who's a, who also happens to be a muslim uh, girl can she insist that she has to wear a hijab while uh, entering the cockpit of the fighter uh, jet bataiye just now just now i heard on your channel that uh, the some students were giving their version that kindly keep it on our choice hmm it should be left uh, live on uh, their no, no. choice no mera sawal ka jawab dijiye na mera sawal ka jawab dijiye askar khan sahab I am asking you there are many many women pilots of the Indian Army Indian Air Force in this country tomorrow if they insist let's say one of them happens right. to be a muslim wo uh, woman fighter pilot she insists i have to wear the hijab while entering the cockpit that will be allowed uh, uh, i think the uh, he has no answer he will change the goal the, post zakari if if anything if 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 anything is related with the religion it should be allowed What is wow. the problem in it? No, I fail to understand. I fail to understand. What is the problem? Army Act. It's against the, the law of the land. What is the anyway? By the way, Absolutely I think somebody pointed, and I want to ask Amitabh Sinha this. Uh, there is a judgment of the Kerala High Court. On the one hand, no, no. Once again, once again, uh, Amitabh Sinha has been waiting very patiently for 15 minutes. Amitabh Sinha, there is a ruling of the Kerala High Court where two. Firoz Sahib, one second. Let me ask my question. Uh, there is a ma uh, there there is a judgment of the Kerala High Court where two uh, students in a minority institution, not even a state-run institution, in a minority institution, went and challenged, saying. uh we should be allowed to wear the hijab and the court ruled that in a minority institution the rights of the institution are above the rights of the individual if that is the case in in a minority institution why should it not be the case in a in a state run institution thank you uh, jakka ji uh, finally i could uh, get a chance to speak and uh, um, i was uh, very patiently and very carefully trying to gather and listen what all these learned people were saying see i have only two points to make it very clear as far as my opinion is concerned this issue is uh, you know 
not a single pronged issue it, it has two, two pronged uh, you know uh, matter it, it is a two pronged matter number one is you know uh, socio religious and another one is technical uh, techno legal so first i am here to explain my point of view as a, as a lawyer techno legal then if you will have time i will try okay. to explain my opinion on socio religious so so this legal technical issue very clear uh, fundamental is there in law if the uniform is there then the uniform rule must be followed in any organization any organization provided uh, the organization decides that particular organization decides that okay so that particular you know uh, um, thing can be can be given as 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 an uh, leeway or the liberty should be given to that person to because that is a very clear and very very particular religious direction like in six the sikh a uh, used turban yeah. and uh, asgar sahab also was uh, giving this example but this is you know cut particularly mentioned in a, a religious script but number uh, important number is that hijab is not a religious turban point anywhere in the quran aspect. or hadith एक मिनट एक मिनट एक प्लीज फिरोज साहब फिरोज साहब बीच में मत बोलिएगा प्लीज प्लीज फिरोज साहब आई रिक्वेस्ट यू बीच में मत बोलिएगा सेम थिंग फिरोज फिरोज भाई फिरोज भाई फिरोज भाई आई एम ऑल्सो आई एम ऑल्सो नो 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 आई एम सॉरी प्लीज डोंट इंटरप्ट यू यू विल हैव टाइम एंड यू मस्ट हैव फेथ इन जक्का जी ही विल गिव यू टाइम जस्ट जस्ट प्लीज हैव पेशेंस सो सो देर इज नो स्पेसिफिक मैंशनिंग ऑफ हिजाब इन नाइदर हदीस और इन कुरान बट टर्बन येस इट इज देयर so so the uh, the part that particular organization which is basically you know handling that uniform code for that particular organization that organization has the liberty to decide number 1 it is fixed fundamental of the legal process number 2 if the the in, why the uniform uniform is basically to uh, to create uniform methodology and uniform presence presence of all the participating members of that organization okay. this is very clear and uniform is mandatory uh, mandatory because it it covers the social and uh, all other type of you know differentiation and every okay. uh, person of that organization should look look like the same so this is the fundamental so so this this hijab or non hijab is clearly demarcate uh, you know amongst the students that who is of what religion this is uncalled for and that's why i think karnataka high court has uh, karnataka government has decided that no hijab is okay. actually is not required you know what, so what hijab justice dulia uh, in his deferring no. judgment today said it's a matter of choice nothing more nothing less now if it's I'm a matter of I'm choice coming. no no one second i i'm i i'm going to ask one second let I, I, me I ask let me ask saira saira let me ask saira this uh, if 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 it is no, a no, matter but, of but choice please, no please no give me second. give me 2 minutes sir sir i have other other guests also please i i you made one point let me go to the other guest Uh, no, sa- but sa- I I was very patiently. Okay. Uh, sa- sa- yeah, you sa- no, no, sa- Saira Shah Halim. I I have a very simple question to ask. Uh, Justice Dulia says it's a matter of choice, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, is it really a matter of choice? Can you, as a feminist woman, and I believe you are one, argue the case that wearing hijab is a feminist concept? I'm very clear. It's a patriarchal concept. Men have invented this concept for women to follow. I don't think a woman okay. invented the concept of hijab. you have to unmute uh, yeah customs in india why does the woman have to go to the husband's house why does the woman have to take the husband's uh, surname why does the woman uh, you know what you call uh, have to kind of do gender relegated roles like be a no no they are all they are all yeah, anti feminist no no since you brought it up and today is karwa chauth karwa chauth is as regressive as a, a fe- anti feminist uh, a concept as no, wearing the hijab is i i am being, no, being very I clear i agree with you I might agree with you. I might agree with you. However, if some women see her and say, "Then look, who, who, who are you to question my choice if I want to?" Ma'am, ma- ma- ma'am, it, it's again, it, it, again, it comes back. No, no, it, it, it comes back. It comes back to the same argument, right? There was a time when millions of women in this country felt that Sati was right, but it was a regressive practice. It was a regressive practice. Yes. In the same way, wearing a hijab is a regressive practice. Let's be very clear about it. A man invented this concept for women to follow. Percent on this. I'm with you hundred percent on this. However, when we talk about social reform, we we as a country overall, we must agree we have a lot of regressive practice that we need to do away with. However, if you're going to look at it from a myopic, uh, you know, what we call lens of 
Islam has aggressive practices, then we will bring justice because in God, overall, if you look let, large scale in all religions, let women me, have always let me take, to take, to take let me take this one one one, one, more step, one more step one more step forward, and, and I will ask Amina Ansari this. If, 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 if wearing hijab is an anti-feminist act, it is a regressive patriarchal act and I have no hesitation in saying this. Certain religions, in Christianity for example, in certain denominations of Christianity, a woman cannot be a priest. That is just as regressive. Why should a woman not be able to do anything that a man is allowed to do? If, if, a, if, a, if women can fly fighter jets for God's sake, they should be allowed to become priests. So no one, no one can convince me that wearing a hijab is a progressive practice or it is a feminist practice. It is not. We never said that. We never said that. We Amin Ansari. Said that we choice. Amin Ansari. You have to unmute, please, ma'am. I can't hear you. You have to unmute yourself. Oh. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Now no, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's a patriarchal construct. It is the society how it brainwashes us. And let me tell you this thing. Even I will go into the Quran. There's a Surah Noor 30, uh, 31 and 32. Uh -huh. So in both Surah, one is for the men and one is for the women. And they both have the same instruction. But man decided that the same instruction does not translate into a certain dress code for men and they use all the op available option for themselves but for the women they bring this kind of dress code and says ki this instruction means you have to wear certain kind of dress code so okay. even that all the interpretation is done by the men in a patriarchal way so this all is right. a patriarchal constructor construction uh, Firozab, I'll give you and the final word. I have one minute to wrap up to I have to wrap up quickly Firozab. yeah <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Zaka Saab. You know, let me tell you one thing. I was very dejected and disheartened to listen to this, uh, the so-called Muslim leader and parliamentarian, Mr. Shafiqur Rahman Bakh, when he says that without hijab, the girls will become characterless, blah, blah, blah. All these things, he, he, he in fact, broke the hell uh, free uh, uh, by saying all these things. Let me tell you one thing. You know, hijab should be actually for men as well. Uh, uh, what what about uh, your men who actually look at uh, these girls and who it is something which is wavered and they have made hijab into a regressive thing which it is not and let me tell you one thing the way the uh, you know the these kind of people are misguiding and provoking the entire uh, public uh, maybe that tomorrow there is an entire ban on hijab which no one wants okay. and by the way i i i i, I, I got to wrap to up God i'm completely out of time no thank you very much to all our guests completely yes. out of time thank you very much uh, we'll